well, well. Yo, what's up? Thanks for tuning in with me today. If you're new here, my name is Tobias. I make videos about everyday carry gear, tech, and cameras and today's video is about my experience using the Leica Q2 after being a Fuji shooter for years starting with the Fuji X100F and then two years worth of shooting experience with the Fuji X100V. I still do have it but five months ago back in November of 2021 I bought the Leica Q2 basically just to see what it's like and if it is actually any better than the Fuji X100V. I also already made a comparison videos of these two cameras back in December, but that was just after like two or three weeks worth of shooting experience with the Leica Q2. So it wasn't like a final conclusion video. This is what this video is supposed to be. But if you're interested in my first comparison video, I got that link for you in the description as well. I also do want to address some of the points that many of you made in the comments section of that first video. Let's call that housekeeping and then get into my experience of using the Leica Q2 over the past five months. Now I know that five months doesn't really sound like a lot and truly it isn't. It is not really a true long-term experience video, but I've been able to take this camera to the Netherlands, to Iceland and to New York. And also I have used the Leica Q2 just as I did with my Fuji X100V before that as my everyday companion camera, meaning that I did actually carry that camera every single day or almost like 98% of the time. And I also had several opportunities to use this in the area where I live, which is the Black Forest area. So I think that it is fair to say that I did get a good amount of experience with this camera so that I can finally come to a conclusion of whether or not it was worth upgrading, quote unquote, from the Fuji X100V to the Leica Q2. So let's get into it. Just as a side note, before we go any further though, if you are only interested in any specific part of this comparison video, feel free to use the timestamps in the description below. No hard feelings. And also, we are experiencing full April weather right now, which basically means that we have all four seasons every single day. So we're going from actual blizzards to blazing sunshine within just a matter of minutes. So if you're noticing a bit of weirdness in the exposure, that's probably just clouds rushing by outside and not the fault of the camera. At least most likely it's not. Anyway, in the spirit of not wasting any more of your time, let's start with the conclusion. So was it worth it to upgrade to the Leica Q2 coming from a Fuji X100V? Objectively speaking, no it wasn't. The Leica is not more than three times the camera that the X100V is. To be completely honest with you, when I first got the Leica, I actually was kind of disappointed. Not only are you losing some of the features of the X100V when you switch to the Leica Q2, like the built-in ND filter, the hybrid viewfinder, the tilt screen, the flash, and other stuff, but also some of the stuff that I was actually expecting to work better on the Leica. And let's call these the essentials. The main issues here being the viewfinder, the autofocus, the auto white balance, and the colors of the images coming straight out of the camera. However, does that mean that I do regret my purchase? No, not at all. And even though I stand by what I just said, I haven't actually really used the X100V since I bought the Q2 and I will continue to use and enjoy the Q2 going forward. Now, how does that make sense? Have I just gotten completely caught up in the Leica hype? Have I lost my mind? Is it a status thing? Well, maybe, but I don't think so. So let me try to give you my perspective on the subject. And just to get you ready for it, there is a good chance that I will sound quite negative for the majority of this video when it comes to the Leica Q2. But that is basically just because I get the feeling when I watch other people's Leica Q2 videos that they are just overly positive and I don't know why that is. But, but that actually led to me being somewhat disappointed when I first got the camera because it simply didn't live up to the hype. That does however not mean that it's not a good camera. Not at all, it is a wonderful camera, but I think it's still worth it to be honest about its flaws. Because if any one of you out there decides to buy a Leica Q2 and spend five grand on this camera because of my videos, I at least want them to be well informed and I want them to know what they are getting into. So let's start off by addressing some of the points that you guys have made in the comment section of said first video. A few of those relate to some of the features of the X100V that I forgot to mention, like the aforementioned built-in ND filter and flash. Those are of course useful features and I miss having them, especially the built-in ND filter, but that was not due to me not acknowledging those features. It was simply a matter of 
shrinking down all of my opinions into a somewhat reasonable time frame so that I don't end up with an overly long video. In that sense, there were also advantages of the Leica Q2 that I didn't go into enough detail about, like the Samilux lens and the vastly better bokeh you get because of it compared to the Fuji X100V. Another point of content was the fact that I didn't address the price difference between these two cameras, with some people saying that it's completely ridiculous to even compare the two. And well, obviously, I completely disagree. First of all, it's not like the Fuji X100V can't hold a candle to the Leica Q2. Actually, in many areas, the Fuji X100V is even superior and beats the Leica Q2. So it's not like they are in completely different leagues in terms of performance. We are not comparing a Porsche 911 Turbo S to a Volkswagen Golf GTI. That's just not the case. Yes, the Leica is more than three times the price of the Fuji X100V, but I think the Fuji really does give it a run for its money and, as I said earlier, it also beats it in several areas. Now with that being said, the Leica is certainly a luxury purchase in my opinion. Some people try to rationalize the price of the Leica Q2 by saying that you get a very high value lens, the Samilux 28mm, with a camera attached for the price of just the lens, but in my opinion that's not really a good argument, because that's just saying that Leica's lenses are outrageously expensive. Another way to look at it though is to say that it is a decent full frame camera with a good lens attached to it. And if you look at prices of current full frame camera offerings from you name it, whatever maker, most of them are in the range of two, two and a half grams and above. And most high end prime lenses for full frame cameras are somewhere in the range of one and a half to two and a half grand. So with that in mind, you could say that yes, five grand actually isn't all that expensive, especially when you also factor in that this camera is made in Germany. So you got decent labor conditions and wages and also it is made by a comparatively small niche brand with a lot of heritage. At the end of the day though, I think that it is really hard to talk about the price of this camera because everyone also wants to know whether or not it's worth it and I simply cannot tell you that. Now I just did, I told you that it's not, but that was an objective statement because it simply is not three times the camera that the Fuji X100V is. At the same time, that is a stupid way to look at it, in my opinion. The question that is really important is, do you need any of the advantages that the Leica Q2 offers over the Fuji X100V and how much is five grand to you? So to put it in more simple terms, if you do actually need the advantages of the Leica Q2 and you have just money to drain down the toilet, why wouldn't you go for it? The money doesn't mean much to you, but you do need the features, it's an easy choice. On the other hand, if you can barely afford the Fuji X100V and you don't actually need the advantages of the Leica Q2 and you might even miss some of the features of the Fuji, why on earth would you go for the Leica? So it's really just a matter of preference if you ask me. All I'm here for is to tell you what the differences actually are and then you have to make the decision for yourself if these differences are worth the difference in the asking price for you. But yeah, with that being said, another main point of contention was the fact that I proclaimed to be a JPEG shooter in my last video comparing these two cameras. Now let me clear that up. I used to shoot Canon before I got into Fuji and back in those days I used to shoot RAW all the time. While I liked the Canon files straight out of camera, there was still a lot of room for improvement and I wanted to put my own spin on my images. Now when I switched to Fuji, I got deep into the menus and started experimenting with the JPEG profiles. You can customize your JPEGs to a ridiculous degree with Fuji's cameras. Add on top the built-in film simulations, which are glorious, and you basically have something that works like a really pleasing Lightroom preset for every occasion built right into your camera. Over time, I noticed that I rarely ever felt a need to edit any of my images. And if I did, honestly, I sometimes ended up making them look worse. And that's when I decided to save a bit of space on my hard drives and just abandon shooting RAW altogether. And also with me saying that, keep in mind that I'm not a working professional. I make no money off of my photography, I just do it for the fun of it, for the memories and to document my life. Plus, while I do love taking photos and trying to get all of my settings, composition, lighting etc. right while I'm taking the shot, I honestly don't enjoy editing photos in Lightroom all that much. So when I got the Leica, I sort of expected to just do the exact same thing. 
I mean, after all, if there's any brand that I associate with heavily focusing on the process of making the photos instead of the digital side of it, it has to be Leica. I mean, Leica's most popular line, the M line, does everything in its power to make the user feel like they are using an old school analog film camera instead of a modern digital mirrorless. Even the newest Leica M11 that goes for over 8 grand, body only, still doesn't use an autofocusing system or a display in the rangefinder. And that's obviously by design and that's on purpose. Leica also still to this day does produce analog film cameras. And back in the days of film shooting, post-processing wasn't as much of a thing really. So in my mind, it was only logical that Leica would also offer an image that works straight out of camera and doesn't need to be edited. But alas, I was wrong. Leica's JPEGs are not terrible, but they are no match to the images I get straight out of my Fuji cameras. Add on top the truly bad auto white balance and some of the images just ended up looking very off. Now at the same time, that is really not the biggest issue in the world. I've simply gotten back to editing my photos in Lightroom and I can fix the white balance and the colors in post easily. And I have to admit that the Leica files are really very pleasant to work with in Lightroom. The bigger issue here for me, and that is a point that has been beautifully articulated by another YouTuber called Samuel from Samuel Street Life, is that it's just less fun shooting with this camera because the images you are taking don't look good while you're taking them. It's basically like I'm only using the display and the viewfinder for framing and that I have to pray that the images will end up looking all right after I'm done editing them. And to be fair, most of the time they do, but you don't get that instant gratification of looking at your screen and seeing a really decent looking image. With the X100V on the other hand, it is a completely different story. Actually, it's sort of the same issue in reverse, because when you use this camera to shoot photos, you do get a very nice image right on your screen, but if you then transfer that file to your computer and blow it up to a bigger size, at least some of the times, these images tend to fall apart a bit. But I guess that is the point where we should end the housekeeping part to get deeper into the part of the video where I talk about my experience of using the Leica Q2 over the past five months or so. So let's do that. And since we were already talking about the displays, let's kick it off with the viewfinder. It's all right, but not great. Now I can't really say if it's a fault of the hardware, meaning the little screen that's in there, or if it's because of the way that Leica processes their images. But especially in high contrast situations, the viewfinder is completely useless when it comes to exposing your image. If you want to expose your image according to the way it looks in your viewfinder, good luck, you are done. Depending on the situation, your image will end up completely over or underexposed. Now granted, in most day-to-day -day situations, that is not as much of a problem. But especially when you're working with backlit scenes, like sunsets and such, it's going to be bad times. My tip is to expose for the highlights because the Leica files are much better at recovering the shadows than they are at recovering the highlights. Aside from that, the white balance is also off in the viewfinder. And I'm not just talking about the fact that the overall auto white balance is bad on the Leica, but I mean it more in the sense that I had occasions where for some reason the whole image did have a blue tint or a blue shift in the viewfinder and after I took the image, it looked all right on the display. No matter what happened there, if the camera just decided to switch the white balance in between me taking the shot and it saving the file, but obviously that makes it even harder to know or to guess what your shot might end up looking like. The viewfinder of the X100V is much better and gives you a much more realistic idea of how your files will turn out after you have taken the shot. But hey, the Q2's viewfinder is still good enough to be used to frame your images and on a good day you might even get some more or less accurate colors and exposure. No guarantees though. Other than that, in terms of usability, I actually do prefer the Leica Q2 over the Fuji X100V. The overall button and dial layout is somewhat similar, at least when it comes to the basic controls, but other than that, there are just fewer buttons and dials overall on the Leica. Now that is not inherently a good thing, and if you like to have custom buttons for every single setting, you might actually prefer the Fuji, but I am more of a set it and forget it type of guy. And since I used both the Fuji and the Leica as my everyday camera, it just happens ever so often that I accidentally nudge some button or wheel without even noticing it and then my camera won't work the way I expect it to and I have to find out what happened and what settings need to be fixed. 
with fewer buttons and dials on the Leica, there's just less of a chance for me to accidentally mess up something. And actually, that has never happened to me with the Leica Q2, whereas it has happened all of the times with Fuji. Now, the low light performance of the Leica Q2 is great. The high ISO performance might not be the best in the full frame world, but it's quite a bit better than the Fuji. Also, it does have that f1.7 aperture and the integrated stabilization. So in short, you can get away with using a lower shutter speed and therefore a lower ISO in most situations. That is a huge advantage. There is one caveat to that though, the autofocus. The autofocus is really not all that reliable when you want to shoot in low light and low contrast situations. Granted, those situations are about as demanding as they get and the autofocus is still doing an okay job, but I've missed a couple of shots because of it, so it is worth mentioning it in this video. The build quality of the Leica Q2 is just superb and so is the reliability. I have used this camera in heavy rains for hours on end in New York City. It has been completely drenched, same thing in Iceland, only that it was also freezing there as a bonus. And I have had zero issues whatsoever with the Q2. With the Fuji, and not just the X100V, but also with the X-T30, I do get the occasional weird thing where you turn it on and the screen is flickering for no reason, or it doesn't turn on, or something else refuses to work. It happens rarely, but it shouldn't happen at all. And it's not only me, I've heard other people here on YouTube talk about similar experiences with their Fuji cameras, so it's not like I just got two bad models or something. With the Leica, on the other hand, I have had zero issues. It always turns on in an instant and always works like a charm. On top of that, the battery life is also very impressive, which is something that cannot be said about the Fuji. Talking about the battery though, one of the first accessories I bought for the Q2 was another battery and goddamn, they cost 145 euros a piece. That is outrageous and simply unjustifiable. I also wanted to buy a thumb grip for the Q2, but those are 210 euros, so I was like, oh, oh, no thanks. And to be honest, even though there's basically no grip to hold onto with this camera, I've never had any slippage or other issues holding it. One area where the Leica Q2 really beats the Fuji, and it's probably, arguably, the most important topic of them all, is the overall image quality. And I know that I just said that the Fuji puts out better looking images straight out of the camera and all that, but that is simply not the end of the story. As I said earlier, the X100V gives me almost the same problem I have with the Q2 in reverse. I love the images when I shoot them, but when I blow them up on a bigger screen, they really start to fall apart quickly. First of all, you can certainly see a difference in terms of ISO noise performance. And there's also a fairly big difference in resolution. But on top of that, there's just something about the Fuji images that makes them look somewhat artificial. If I had to guess, I would probably say that it is precisely because of all the algorithms and the film simulations going on in this camera. It's a bit similar in my mind to the images you take on your iPhone, which always end up looking great on your phone screen, but once you want to use them as your wallpaper on your notebook or something, they kind of fall apart. Now that is not at all the case with the Leica images. Yes, the white balance is off fairly often and the colors straight out of camera don't look that great, but at least they look clean. And after you're done editing them, a lot of the times they look fantastic. I use several of my own images as my wallpapers and even on the glorious display of that new 16 inch MacBook Pro, they just work. Now lastly, I want to talk about something that is hard to describe and that is the fun factor. Now there is certainly a huge fun factor to using the Fuji X100V. No doubt about it, I absolutely love it and I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it to anyone. But, at least for me personally, that is even more true when it comes to the Leica Q2. Having a Leica has a certain cool factor to it, at least in my opinion. It's one of those German heritage brands that I'm very happy that it still exists and still thrives. But the reason why using this camera is so much fun is more because of its no-nonsense approach to photography, its focus and its reliability. Not to forget the fact that by now, after having used it for multiple months, I know that it will produce beautiful images reliably, even though it might not look like it on the back of the screen. So in conclusion, this is a fantastically capable and reliable camera. 
Yes, it has its weaknesses. Yes, it's lacking in features. And yes, there are quirks. Even yes to the fact that it is, objectively speaking, probably not worth the asking price. But what it is, is a simplified camera that takes away a lot of the options and decision making that might distract you from what's really most important, getting the shot. Once you get used to working with the 28mm focal length, it just becomes second nature. And with just a bit of Lightroom magic, you can be sure to always leave with some decent images. It is also certainly more capable in low light, more rugged and more versatile than the Fuji X100V. Mostly because of its 28mm focal length, the f1.4 aperture, the high resolution full frame sensor and its overall build quality. I'm still not sure whether or not I can actually bring myself to sell this camera just because I do love it so much. But right now, to be completely honest, it feels kind of pointless to have it around since I haven't actually used it in months. And with that said, the Leica Q2 will certainly be my travel and everyday camera going forward. I loved having it with me on my recent trips to New York City and to Iceland. By the way, check out the videos I made about those trips and my experience of using the Q2 on those trips in case that's something that you're interested in. And I'm already looking forward to taking it on more adventures in the future. I've gotten some trips to France, Italy, the Netherlands, and maybe other more long distant places planned for the coming weeks and month. So if you would like to see me use that camera on those trips, feel free to subscribe so that you never miss another video. Also, while we're at it with the shameless promo, I have been mostly inactive on Instagram over the past months or years really even though i plug it every now and again on my youtube channel but after my most recent videos about the leica q2 i've really gained a good amount of new followers so that now sort of motivates me to upload more photos so follow me on instagram if that's something that you would like to see but that's all i got for you today new semi-regular videos coming soon as i said i got some travel plans also as a bonus i bought another backpack which i'm going to make a video about of course and also i'm currently shooting on the new viltrox 13 mm f1.4 on my fuji xt4 so i don't know if that's something that you guys would be interested in but if you want to see me make a video about this lens feel free to tell me in the comments down below anyway that's really it for today stay tuned for my next video until then take good care of yourself bye bye